Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Chef Dean Max. Uh, today in the kitchen, we're going to make risotto. Uh, risotto is super special to me. I first had it when I was a student in Italy uh, as a younger kid, and I could just never uh, forget that flavor. And it's one of those things that uh, when it's done right, it's super special. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it the right way. Okay, so click that subscribe if you're not already subscribed to my channel. Ring that bell. Okay, I'll send you announcements of other cool stuff we have going on. Um, and give me a thumbs up if you like it, okay? So we'll be back in a second. The first thing we're gonna do on this risotto uh, is we have to have a good stock. So uh, two of the things that we're gonna work with are mushrooms and I'm gonna use some tomatoes that I had laying around. Tomatoes make a great stock uh, for something like this. Uh, they're gonna add extra flavor. So with this, I'm just gonna take the ends of the tomato off like this and have them really don't need to do anything else. These are Roma tomatoes. I let them sit um, in my countertop and get really ripe. Um, and we'll just take these and stick them in uh, my Nutribullet. I'm going to put a little water in this. Um, it, it's really not important how much water. We're just probably going to do like a half cup of water in there as well. And I'm going to blend this up. Now, what I want to do is let it blend really smooth. Because what we're looking to do is use this tomato water as our stock. Okay, the tomato has uh, been really pureed in there. Um, most of uh, the skin of this has been pulverized into a juice now. And if you wanted to strain that, you could actually strain it, but it's not really needed. Um, it's really pureed. And I'm gonna add that here, my tomato juice with my water, okay? And that's going to be part of the stock. The other part of the stock is going to come from the uh, mushroom juice. And I'll show you that in a second. We've got a little acorn squash here. I'm just going to be very careful to, to stab this thing. You don't want to stab your arm. That would not be a good, good way to start your day. But uh, we want to just kind of rotate it through. And I just tap it like that. Uh, these acorn squash are actually pretty tough. So you have to kind of give it a little pop. Now. You're going to see it's cut. I've got the seeds are there. I just need to take those out, but that's what we're doing. So with this, we're going to take our seeds and pulp and throw it away. Um, and we have our nice squash. Now, in my, in my cast iron pan here that I have um, that I'm going to roast these in, right? You can roast it in anything. You put it in glass, Pyrex, whatever, uh, baking, uh, baking pan. Um, I want it to sit up straight, though, because I'm going to fill this with a nice juice that's going to make it flavorful. So I cut this bottom off to create a flat um, edge here. So this little squash will sit up straight, right? So now that I've done that, I fit my little squash in here. I get them nice and straight. Make sure I'm happy with them, right? And then I'm going to put a little olive oil all over them like this and then I'm going to drizzle them with honey now the honey I kind of usually keep it inside here don't pour it in your pan or anything okay um, and this is going to add this little sweetness to the dish which is going to be really nice especially with squash okay and then I'm going to put freshly ground pepper and then I'll add a little pinch of sea salt Put it all around. I want this thing to roast nice with all those flavors. Okay, and then that's it. Now, what, one of the key things is I like to put some water in this pan. So I will stick probably, you know, maybe a couple, maybe a water to about a fourth of the acorn squash. And then from here, we're gonna throw this in the oven and then that's gonna take probably about 45 minutes at 350 degrees. We're going to now make this risotto. This is uh, uh, the most kind of fun part of this process here is uh, stirring the constant kind of playing with it. I think that's what really makes an amazing risotto is the, uh, the manipulation of the spoon and the starch and how it, it just melts like that. And that's what makes it super creamy. And that's the only way you make it creamy. You don't really put cream uh, in a risotto. So what I have here to start with is I've got 
uh, some, some soaked mushrooms. Now, I have these porcinis. Now, in Italy, you have these really expensive mushrooms, these porcinis. You can buy them in the store. Every grocery store sells them dried like this. And they've got a really neat smell. Um, fresh, they're amazing, but um, they're very expensive. But if you buy them dry, they're not as bad. Uh, you can buy a little pack in the store, and you don't need a lot. So I actually um, usually keep them in, in a jar because I don't use as many as you would think. Um, what I do is I soak them in water, and I have plenty of water there. So it's a, you know, just for a, a tablespoon of those um, mushrooms, I'm just going to pull them out and put it on the cutting board here because I'm going to mince them up. You can just chop those from this point. Now, that liquid, I take that liquid and add that to my tomato water. So what I'm going to do is the tomatoes that we just pureed, we're going to go ahead and put this. You let it settle a little, and I'm going to stick it back here on my stove, um, and I'm going to turn that up. Now, why do I turn it up? I turn it up because I want to get as much um, reduction out of that as I can uh, in this short period of time. So I have the tomato water and then that mushroom juice. We're going to bring this to a boil and let those reduce a little and the flavors to come together. That's our stock, okay? You could just use water. If you don't have that, if you have just mushrooms, what I would do in this, if, uh, if you have just mushrooms, is, is uh, take the mushrooms. I don't like to saute a lot of stuff with the rice because then when you're stirring it, it changes the the, the textural piece, you don't get it because you have all this chunky stuff in there the rice is sticking to. So you never get this real feel of rice. So when you're making risotto, stick to the risotto. If you want to put stuff with it, put it separate. So the mushrooms, if you wanted to do a lot of additional mushrooms, put those separate. These are a very strong, very flavorful mushroom, so we don't need a lot. Um, so that's why we're going to actually put it inside. So with this, I'm going to use a shallot. If uh, you don't have a shallot, you want to use an onion, that's fine. Um, Shallots I usually have kind of around because just just like onions, they're pretty easy to get nowadays. It used to be a day when you know shallots were hard to find in the grocery store and such, but now you see them at any generic grocery store will have shallots in there usually, um, and they're not that expensive either. But they're more kind of intensified onion flavor. So what I do is I just cut these shallots um, and peel them. I cut them in half. Remember, like lace your vegetables flat. And then I want to cut straight down. When you're cutting an onion, I'll need to do a video on how to cut an onion because so many people kind of always ask, how do you mince up like this? So you cut straight down one way, and then this way we're going to come back on a horizontal and cut this shallot like this. Now, when I come back and I mince it here, we end up with this beautifully chopped shallot. Okay. And then I'm going to put that, we just almost like shaving the shallots, right? And you don't need a lot. This, I'm making a small batch. This is one, one cup of rice. So this is one cup of rice is going to be for two people um, to have dinner. And then that's good. I think having uh, one shallot like that's good. Now, I have some garlic oil. That garlic oil is a residual oil that I had left over from doing my garlic confit. And I'll attach that video on how to make garlic confit so you can see that. So the excess oil that you would have for that is extra virgin olive oil with a lot of garlic uh, flavor in it. Okay. Now, wow, it smells so good. Um, it, it really is a nice thing to have. Keep it in the fridge. Uh, it'll keep fresh for a, a month at least. So I do have a garlic clove. I'm going to lay it. I'm going to cut it in half and lay it flat as well. And then I'm going to cut back and do these little thin shaved slices of garlic so it can have these little bits that I've kind of have of fresh garlic in there as well. So if you don't have the garlic on feet, you can use just fresh garlic. If you have the garlic on feet and you don't want to put uh, chopped garlic, you don't have to put that in there. So what we're going to do with that, I'm going to add a little bit more oil. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is turn this on. Okay. My, now uh, my, my induction makes a little noise here. It's got some little uh, buzzing going on and uh, that's gonna get this thing really hot really fast um, so with a risotto the key to this is cooking quick and then always keeping it hot so whoa there we go which is a good key we want to always keep it hot so that's hot back there boiling and that's what I want 
we're always going to add boiling liquid to this. If you cook this um, beyond the wine, if you cook this um, for a while and then you're always adding cold and it's getting cooler, it messes with the consistency uh, and the starch uh, and the rice and that, that's not what you're looking for. So with this, we're going to go ahead and saute this up quick. You can see how quick that works. I'm going to put a little bit of ground pepper in there. This pepper now, this black pepper, is going to kind of blend nice with the olive oil and the shallots and give it a nice flavor. I just put a little bit of salt in as well. Salt as you go. So add a little salt now, add a little salt halfway through, and add more salt at the end. Okay? So you can see this is really uh, sauteing nicely. Okay. Now that that's sauteing nicely, I'm going to go ahead and put my chopped mushroom in. This is more of minced mushroom. And you're saying to yourself, well, it's not really a lot of mushroom for the dish. But this particular mushroom, this porcini mushroom, has got a lot of flavor in it. And what we're looking for is just the flavor in this. So when I'm doing risotto, I'm just adding things that have intense flavor. Um, if you really didn't have a great mushroom, I wouldn't put the mushroom in there at all now. I would just roast the mushrooms separately or saute the mushrooms separately if you're using button mushrooms. And then you can put those on the top after. Um, and that way you're not messing the risotto up. So with this, that's really cruising along. And I've got my one cup of risotto rice. Now that's aborio rice. The aborio rice, you can see um, it's short grain. It's very white and, uh, and uh, kind of powdery looking is the right word. Um, and that's because it has a lot of starch on it externally as well. So with that, we don't really rinse. We don't want to rinse that off. We want the starch in this. Risotto is one of those where you really want that flavor. So with this, um, we're going to just toast it like this lightly. I mean, we're just coating every kernel of the rice with olive oil. That's what we're looking to do. Um, the garlic and the shallot have already toasted. The mushroom is warmed up. Now what we're going to do is add our wine. So with this, you want to deglaze with a white wine. Pinot Grigio, obviously, uh, seeing that it's Italian grape, um, white wine that's uh, you know crisp and light, that seems the most appropriate. Um, but you can make risottos with everything. I've, I've made red wine risottos where I've added red wine to it and done it with duck or something. And uh, it's really amazing. So um, you, you can see that I've got this in this high temperature. So even though I just put that cold uh, liquid in, it's still cruising really well. And that's what we want. We don't want to slow it down. And I'm always stirring. Um, this is to develop that starch in the rice. So risotto is kind of like one of those high maintenance dishes. It's kind of a dish where if you've got your stove uh, top in front of your gas and you're standing around and you're drinking some wine, by the way, we can drink some wine. Can't let all the Pinot Grigio go in the rice, right? So um, you're standing around drinking, you can still stir, you can tell stories. Um, and when it's done, it's going to be this amazing thing that you're going to want to eat right away because it's, when it's ready, it's ready to go. Okay, so now I'm going to take my liquid here and I'm going to start adding that in. So this is my tomato water and mushroom juice together. Now, if you wanted to do this uh, with chicken stock instead and just have no mushrooms in it, you could do that too. The whole process of the risotto is really um, the same. I want to turn it down probably to like a, a medium high because you're looking to simmer at this point. We don't need to rapidly boil it. What we're looking to do is keep stirring and you can see the rice is going to start to thicken that liquid up too as it's cooking down. Um, and eventually we're going to add all this liquid in here little by little um, until the rice is done. So how much liquid does it take? You know what? I put a quart of of liquid in there so we had about three about half a quart of tomato water and about half a quart of the uh of the mushroom juice or the the draining liquid from that so i'm going to use about a quart i think in this but it really is about texture 
So if you run out of water, you can add a little at the end uh, to keep it going. So we're going to keep continuously cooking this and then we'll be back in a little bit and I'm going to show you guys how to finish this and how to plate it up. So we'll see you back in a second. And what we've done is kind of just cook this down for another 10 minutes. Um, and we haven't really added any liquid to this. We didn't really need any. I think that cord is probably right on the money. So you can see the rice is really thickened up. It's nice and creamy now, and that's where we want it. And I'm going to add to that some nice butter. So this is a European style butter. Um, it's not as watery. That's why I, I use those. So, I mean, you can use whatever one you want. This Presidente is always a decent quality um, butter, but there's a lot of good butters out there. So shop around for what you like. Um, and then I want to stir that butter in. That's going to make this additionally more creamy. And, and that's, you know, obviously a great thing for me. So um, when you're eating risotto, you want to be creamy. This is not the dish to go. We're not going to have it be buttery. Um, so with this, I'm going to add in um, my microplaned Parmesan. Now, make sure you buy real Parmesan. You see the, the Reggiano on the um, heel of this. Uh, you want to buy the real deal for this, okay? Uh, don't put it in here. If you're going to go through all, all the work of stirring and stirring and stirring, this dish is about a few ingredients, right? It's about some shallots. It's about some mushrooms. It's about a little bit of white wine and nice rice and a little stock that you made. And it's about really nice butter, really nice cheese, okay? So don't cheap it out, okay? And then you can see I'm probably putting a good quarter cup of microplaned cheese in there. Because I love it cheesy. How do you not like it cheesy? And really nice Parmesan is the way to go. So one of the ways you can start to tell when risotto gets ready is you can look at it, the grain on the back of your uh, spoon here and press it. And if you don't, you see just like a little dot. And you can, it's going to be hard for you to see that because it's hard for me to see it even. A little dot of white left. That means it's ready. And I've just tasted it. It's actually, salt is pretty good. Hmm. I'm going to do a little bit more salt, okay? And then this is going to be it. And that's how you want it. You see how it just falls, how creamy that is? That's where we want this risotto to be. So what I want to do is take some flat leaf parsley here. So I've got some Italian flat leaf parsley. So buy Italian flat leaf. Don't buy the curly parsley. This has a much nicer flavor. And I'm going to come back and cut it the other way too. And then all I'm going to do is take a handful of that, stick it in here. Okay, I'll leave a little bit for garnish so after. And then I want to stir this in. You don't need to cook it in there. You cook it in there, it's going to really kind of break down all those flavors and you're going to lose it. You want that initial beautiful herbal flavor from that. And I'm going to pull out as beautiful squash that I roasted. And they take about the same time. I mean, you probably put these in the, the oven maybe like um, 30 minutes before you do your risotto. And your risotto takes about 20 minutes, 25 maybe to 30 minutes too. So um, it's perfect, right? Ooh, wow, that's nice and hot, right? So I'm going to move that parsley over a little bit so you can plate this here. And I've got our beautiful... Um, Acorn squash, nicely roasted. You can see it's absorbed a lot of the olive oil, of the honey. Uh, the honey's colored it nicely. And then with that, we're going to just go ahead and stick in our beautiful parsley and mushroom, porcini mushroom risotto. And that's going to be it. You can just put a little, you can take a little leaf of, uh, of parsley for the top of that if you'd like. Uh, you want to make it fancy for your friends, whoever your special date is, and that's it. You've got this beautiful acorn squash with mushroom risotto. Try this mushroom risotto out. It's amazing. Like I said, if you don't have the portinis, it's fine. Uh, just do it with the tomato water. You can do that easily. And then you can saute up just button mushrooms and stick those on top. Or in the, You can fold them in after you've made the risotto, like right now is when I would fold the cooked uh, mushrooms in. So that's the dish. Eat it quickly because 
Uh, it, it doesn't, it's not great sitting around for like 30, 40 minutes. It's going to harden up. You can use the leftovers. I wrap them in plastic wrap and put them in the refrigerator. And then the next day I'll pan fry those like little cakes. And they're really nice like that. You can bread them if you want. Um, or you could just saute them straight in a nonstick pan and they're fantastic. So hopefully you liked it. Give me a thumbs up. Join my channel if you're not already doing, doing that. So, uh, look forward to having you back, uh, for another adventure in the kitchen. I'm Chef Dean Max. We'll see you soon.